Yeah, just if you are if you are online and you are hearing this paper again, you are not uh, hallucinating. It's really <laughs> happening. I'm repeating the same paper again, so you can just change the room if you if you like. And uh, so otherwise, thanks for coming for my paper titled "If you don't play here, you're not human," or the paradigm boundary and Romani music making in Slovakia. So when I first actually immersed into the topic of Romani ethnicity, I realized how controversial it is. Uh, it was when I was preparing for my MA final exam and uh, I found, you know, this discussion full of bitter disagreements, emotionally charged and highly sensitive. And I was hoping, I hope I will never have to contribute or never have to read anything about Romani ethnicity again. However, I started this fieldwork in, uh, in central Slovakia, more particularly in two muni municipalities, Klenovac and Kokava, with these guys, with Romani musicians uh, from, from these two muni municipalities. And I realized the topic of ethnicity uh, for my field is so central that I just cannot omit it. So what I did was I decided to, to you know, immerse into this topic again while changing the focus a bit. Um, so instead of asking what is Romani ethnicity, I decided to ask a question what Romani ethnicity does. What does it mean to be Roma in the context of my field? So this paper uh, will have actually two parts. In the first part, I will introduce sort of inductive theoretical model that I developed to, to understand uh, Romani ethnicity performance in my field. And in the other part, second part, I will show you two short videos like ethnographic glimpses, and I will try to interpret them uh, with this uh, theory in mind. So let's jump right into it. The, the word paraya, you definitely know, is the figurative term that refers to any people who are despised, uh, disrespected, rejected. And it's, uh, in, you know, it emerged in, in the social science discourse, for example, in, in the work of, of sociologist Max Weber, and it also appeared in, uh, quite inconspicuously, but it uh, appeared in very important anthropological contribution, one of the most renowned anthropological contribution of, of uh, the previous century, uh, and that is Frederick Barth's um, contribution on uh, ethnic boundaries. So in a nutshell, what Barth uh, say, says in this article is that um, ethnicity is not something that is primordially a science, nothing that emerges naturally, but rather, it's the process of social. There's a process of social construction and negotiating and renegotiating these boundaries. Uh, he argues that there's a process of inclusion. That these are the processes of this inclusive solidarity that merge one particular group of people together. And at the same time, he says there's a, the processes of exclusion. That is, you don't belong to us. Just you know, go away because you are no longer part of our groups. And this is how uh, Barth argues. Uh, Know, this ethnic boundaries mechanism work. And he argues also that this paria, pariadum boundary or paria groups, they are uh, specifically created in this like rejection. So that it's a very specific way how to experience this ethnic boundary. It's uh, mainly, um, mainly created and constructed by this active rejection by what he calls host majorities. And obviously, this, this came in handy in, uh, in the Romani studies. Here you can see some, some quotation that some scholars uh, regarded this notion as a major factor in the preservation and even necessary condition for the maintenance of Romani ethnic identity. And that's why um, also, uh, you know, this term of, of uh, or sorry, this, this idea that uh, Roma are uh, mainly being form with the, with the uh, exclusion processes, it's, it actually emerged outside the social science discourse. Like here you can see that, that in European Union um, report, uh, they found Roma to, among others, be defined as, uh, as the history of segregation in European societies. And thus, this is not very uh, original, what I'm proposing is uh, that there are like, abundant mentions of, of Roma as pariahs. So in short, and this is the first point, uh, I uh, analyzed the defining processes of, of the paradigm boundary through the Don Romani exclusion while focusing on its significance in the ethnic agency of Roma in my field. So that's the first premise. So the second term I use in my theory is the, is the concept of ethnic boundary marker, markers. It again comes from 
this bar contribution on I think boundaries. And uh, why I think it's handy to look at markers is that you can actually analyze uh, distinctive components of, of ethnic boundary as if not to um, not to consider them as, as a holistic concept, but you can focus on each and every component and put them under microscope. And what the microscope I use is exactly this. It's, it's semiotics, uh, semiotics framework that sees, and this is my approach, uh, that I consider ethnic boundary marker as a sign of boundary. And what matters also is the third part of the triangle, that is the interpretant, the idea of ethnic difference. So just to, this is, was a bit theoretical, so I will give one, um, one quick example how it works. Uh, so for example, this um, phenotypic appearance as a marker of ethnic uh, difference, color of one's skin, let's say. From semiotic perspective, skin tone exists in the world only as a quality, as, um, as uh, Pierce puts it, it's qualified. It has no identity. It, it is the mere quality of an appearance and it cannot actually act as a sign until it is embodied. So when you think about uh, the skin tone in, uh, in um, this, this triangle, then you know, the skin tone itself, it doesn't have any, any role, it, it doesn't have any, any function. But when it comes to the process of constructing meaning, then what really matters is what is on the right side of, of, um, of the pyramid, of the, of the triangle. It is the... Um, the idea of the, of the ethnic difference. It is the meaning uh, that people assign to what the ethnic difference means. So that's my theory. W what I argue is that ethnic boundaries and, and paradigm boundaries likewise are constructed in triadic relationship with signs and interpretants. And so with this theoretical model, I went to, or, or actually um, reimagined my, my ethnographic material from Klanovets. And uh, I decided to, to ask this research question. How is the paradigm boundary constructed and maintained in Klanovets? And which common strategies do Ruma use to adapt to these conditions? So let's see a short video. And if you see this video, just think what, what, you, what you see and what is the uh, sort of performance behind it. Vidněte si tady taky. Ne? A to je sladký, dobrý, sýr je tam. Co by ne? Říkám, asi ponuknu, nikdo si moc neponuká. No? Ale výkon. To je, ale to je věc. Marcela, ponukni si, tam je víno. Sladkosti, sír, no tak, ví, tak víno ne, ale tak sír si můžeš ponuknout. Dej si ně, tak, dě, tak děti, ať si daj. Klaudie, Domina, tady vínečko, jídlo. Ani ty, nedáš si? A to je, to je pro vás, to je pro návštěvníky výstavy. My víme, ale my radost to radši chodíme taky. A mohlo být víc počet, ten francouz mal víc. Teď se vrobíš na výstavu, Karolko. Hej. To je naozaj nevíš, co chyba. Hej, no vím. To tvoj otec. Vyskra. Víno. Pivo. Já tě nic neplubám. So, what I wanted to show you is this. Um, um, I'm, I'm gonna give you a little bit of context about uh, about the the video excerpt that you you just see. So we made sort of photo exhibition for uh, for non Roma, and I thought that uh, sorry for Roma, and for this exhibition, I thought it would be great to invite like everyone, every Roma from the village in person, including those who live in segregated settlement of Dolinka, the the Osada, and uh, so I did go to Dolinka and I invited everyone in person, and I uh, you know hope everyone would come, and I even tell them. Uh, you know, guys, there, there will be not just photos, but also free food and, and, and drinks. And uh, so you may think, oh gosh, this, this is going to work because it's going to be like in Kusturica's film that they will come in huge numbers and they will deprive the non-Roma for their resources and they will eat all food and 
drink all wine and they'll be you know singing until, until the morning but what happened was exactly what you saw in the video there were very few people attending from Dolinka and those who attended they you know they didn't touch neither of the thing and uh, after uh, the, the exhibition, we, we had sort of reflection with um, my non-Romani co-organizer of, of the exhibition. And she said, did you notice that no Roma touch either the food or the drinks? And she continues, when I was involved in a campaign for the mayoral election, uh, the Roma in front of me washed the glass that, glasses that were already washed. I think it's the same thing, as if there is a line between them and us, as if they are ashamed of their poverty, as if they feel we are not equal. And this is how I imagine the, the effect of the paradigm boundary in, in the context of my field. The paradigm boundary means that uh, being Roma most of the time in Klanovets means actually being uh, connected with poverty. It means being connected with, uh, with negative stereotypes about Roma and so on. So uh, for this reason, uh, most of the Roma develop these strategies of, of under-communicating the, the ethnic boundary markers and, in fact, uh, sort of visible in, sorry, invisibility uh, in uh, the contact, in everyday contact with, with non-Roma. However, in the other part of the video, you saw as if completely different group of people, right? You saw people who were laughing loudly, who were chatting confidently, and who even, like, not even touched, not just touched the food, but even... Uh, um, you know, commented what is missing on the table. And uh, not just based on this video, but based on my long-term experience uh, from Klanovets, I think what musicians in Klanovets represent is very distinct, divergent lifestyle group that behave ways differently from the other Roma. Um, here's an interview excerpt with one non-Roma who referred to uh, a Rom called Gazda, a Romani musician. And he said, look, for example, Gazda, do you know why he is nicknamed Gazda? That is homesteader. Because he did the same things as the whites did. He built a house, he bred pigs, he was like us. So you see that they, these musicians tend to, tend to acquire uh, the, the habits of non-Romani majority. The other thing that they, they tend to practice is distancing. They try to disconnect from, from poverty. They try to disconnect from, from any, anyone living in the settlement. They try to disconnect from poor Roma. And interestingly, they also don't teach their kids Romani language, as if like, they try to eradicate uh, this marker of, of uh, Romanes. They, they try to be as, as if non-Roma, to behave as non-Roma. So to conclude, um, what Romani musicians, comparing to, to uh, the other group of Roma, what they do is they distance from poverty and poor Roma, uh, and uh, they acquire some non-Romani habits, and uh, it also involves leaving individual Romanes behind. But there is a special case for music making that you will see on the second video. So let's have a look. <laughs> A budeme trošku na playback hrať a ja vás naučím refrén aký je, dobre? Hopa líde, líde. Ťažké je to vyslobiť, ale myslím si, že všetci sme prešli prvnú triedu, takže okrem jedného hudobníka, to som ja. Hopa líde, hopa líde, líde, hopa líde, líde, hopa líde, 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 dá. So, the, the sentence that may have struck your attention is exactly this. And I'm going to try to make it better and I hope I won't mess it again. Okay, I think we all made it through the first grade except from me, the musician said. So the interesting thing about this gentleman is that he, in fact, um, has a MA degree in social work, thus he belongs to top 10% of the most educated people in his region. And despite of that, he just like goes on the stage and says, you know, um, I just don't have any, any schools. And, you know, you may think this is just, just one joke, but the fact is that I've heard thousands and thousands of, of jokes, not just from him, but for, for many other musicians, like this one, for example. Thank you, thank you, we'll be right back after a short break. Now we need to go to eat. We are all divorced and we haven't eaten for a week. So none of them was divorced and who knows how, how did they eat right before, but I believe they, they have eaten well. There's another joke, where's your fiddle? By the way, Vladimir Sunday never plays fiddle, and this part he says in pawn shop, you know. So these are some of the some of the things that make me think that, in some context, 
it's actually cool to over communicate some ethnic boundary marker of Romanes and this context is particularly the context of musical stage where Romanes can be enacted quite purposefully and instrumentally and what is interesting it's it does include even those markers that are in any other context considered harmful for Roma right S such as the the marker of poverty we haven't eaten for a week it, it means you know if, if you say outside a musical stage that you haven't eaten for a week it's you know it's putting you down while if you say it on a musical stage it may actually work as sort of uh, trademark as a s sort of uh, music label and so this is the the end actually so I, I would return to to the first uh, quotation just to just to have um, this conclusion if you don't play here you are not a man what what does it what does it mean or you are not a human um, in, in clan of us there is this strong effect of parade and boundary that is uh, most of the Roma must must adapt to the situation that being Roma for them means, you know, being associated with those things that I mentioned, with poverty, with, with trouble, with uh, not very nice relationship that they have with, with non-Romani majority and so on. You know, it's the same for, for the musicians and the non-musicians. However, the musical craft is a very special way of also performing Romanes because um, it does lead to a relative prosperity economic wise that is if you if you do perform music you do accumulate some some uh, social economic capital and it, it's basically the best job that you can get in in the context of my field but it also means that it, on the musical stage you can stay roma you can perform your romanes and not to be like uh, persecuted for it but also to be welcome for it so yeah that's the controversial point i i wanted to make here are some references and, and this is the end. So thank you for your attention. This is the second end. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for this. Um, so I will ask our online audience if they have any questions.